somehow this article written by the OpenAI team themselves and released end of February 2023 went relatively unnoticed compared to the explosive contents and consequences. Because, you know, when the most advanced team of artificial intelligence researchers in the world say something, it kind of makes sense to listen. And yet most people are ignoring it and keep living their daily lives like nothing is happening. So this article is about AGI, Artificial General Intelligence, and how it may impact society. If you ask ChatGPT itself, AGI refers to the hypothetical development of artificial intelligence that can understand or learn any intellectual task that a human being can. But as of today, no one has developed an AGI system that fully meets this definition. Except maybe someone already did. And we just don't know it yet. In the article, OpenAI says that as our systems get closer to AGI, we are becoming increasingly cautious with the creation and deployment of our models. Our decisions will require much more caution than society usually applies to new technologies and more caution than many users would like. Some people in the AI field think the risks of AGI and successor systems are fictitious. We would be delighted if they turn out to be right, but we are going to operate as if these risks are existential. Notice the beginning of the sentence. As our systems get closer to AGI and all the caution that follows, which means that they know that AGI is within reach for them or maybe already achieved. They also say that as they create successively more powerful systems, they will deploy them gradually because a gradual transition gives people, policymakers and institutions time to understand what's happening, personally experience the benefits and downsides of the systems, adapt our economy and to put regulation in place. It also allows for society and AI to co-evolve and for people collectively to figure out what they want while the stakes are relatively low. If you've seen my video which lists all the jobs that will disappear to AI in 2023 and beyond, now consider that they all fall into the low stakes basket. Then OpenAI goes on saying, at some point the balance between the upsides and downsides of deployments, such as empowering malicious actors, creating social and economic disruptions, and accelerating an unsafe race, could shift in which case we would significantly change our plans around continuous deployment. This means that OpenAI could decide to stop deploying their AI models if the impact on society becomes too dangerous. But it doesn't mean that they will stop using it, which is a critical distinction that we will talk about later in the video. So make sure to watch until the end and let me know what you think. Keep in mind that this is all just part of the short-term paragraph. In the long term, they practically beg governments and societies to intervene in their work when they say that there should be great scrutiny of all efforts attempting to build AGI and public consultation for major decisions. Because AGI can either turn out as something extremely beneficial or extremely detrimental to the world, coordination among AGI efforts to slow down at critical junctures will likely be important which sounds pretty surrealistic coming from a private company founded by billionaires. Now, if you read this article between the lines, you quickly realize that what we have been shown with chat GPT and image generation AI such as MidJourney are just the tip of the iceberg. It's very likely that OpenAI and a few other companies in that area already possess much more advanced technology and are just holding it back and maybe won't ever release it. The official reason for holding back is safety, to make sure to build an AI that is aligned with human goals. But the unofficial, real reason can very well be found in the book called Life 3.0. It was published in 2018, a few years before the world got to experience the tip of the iceberg in terms of AI. The first chapter of this book pretty much predicts how a company that develops AGI will behave. But before we discuss it, it's important to understand who Max Tegmark, the author, is. So, he's a physicist, cosmologist, machine learning researcher and professor at the MIT. He's also the founder of the Future of Life Institute, which aims at democratizing AI safety research. 
But now, forget all that. What's most important about him is that he hangs out with the most advanced brains working on artificial intelligence altogether. In the book, he regularly refers to the interactions that he has with AI researchers working in various companies such as OpenAI, Google and others. Therefore, he knows what he's talking about. And maybe in the very first chapter of this book, he wanted to send us a message. So, it's a hypothetical scenario where a team of researchers named Omega realizes that they've just created a super intelligent program named Prometheus. This program is still under their control. It's not a super intelligent sentient being that wants to take over the world or anything like that, but rather an extremely powerful tool. So powerful, in fact, that the Omegas decide to hide it because it can literally do anything. If anyone else discovers their technology, they will want to steal it. At the same time, the Omegas know that they can pretty much make an infinite amount of money off it. So they need to go into industries that won't immediately notice the power at their disposal. For example, they could easily invest and beat the stock market using Prometheus. But it would be too obvious. So they first start by building thousands of fake accounts on Amazon and Turk, and the Prometheus built models assume their identities. It does the work that is normally done by humans. That way, they are able to generate a million dollars per day, but that's the limit. If they go beyond that, this behavior will attract unwanted attention, so they have to look for something else. Eventually, they narrow down their search to products that are highly valuable, purely digital and easily understandable, which in business terms can be called scalable, and end up with animated movies first. Prometheus is able to create highly engaging animated movies based on what humans like the most, and they all make a hit. Animated content is relatively safe because there are no simulated humans in it, and so no one will have any suspicions that it's created by an artificial intelligence. But they soon also reach the limit of how much money they can make in that market, so they keep expanding. They decide to launch a Netflix competitor and cover their tracks using a bunch of shell companies around the world with fake employees. They end up beating everyone else in the market because their content is better and cheaper, so no one can compete. The book goes much more into details, but I'll just fast forward because I think you get the point. Eventually, they own all the media in the world. Prometheus creates and adapts content to what people like the most in each country, including news and journalism, and that way, they are able to manipulate people's minds and politics in their favor. You can imagine where this goes next. Now let's get back to the real world and consider this. Today, corporations with huge amounts of money are already able to buy pretty much anything and expand their businesses in any market they want. But they only do so for the most lucrative ones. Sure, Amazon and Apple can launch a graphic design company, but it wouldn't make sense. There isn't one massive global graphic design company, Rather, there are many small and medium ones, and it's not a scalable business. So instead, they do streaming services. Amazon launched Prime, Apple launched Apple TV, and so on. It has nothing to do with their core businesses, and yet they invest heavily in such platforms, because once you get them running, you can target a gigantic market and make tons of money. So they go for the big prize. But if Amazon or Apple wanted to own all the bakeries, fitness clubs and barber shops in your city, they could. They're just not interested. And this brings me back to AI that is accessible to people today, such as ChatGPT and Co. My point is that most likely, we are shown the most basic version of them and we probably won't ever be allowed to use the most advanced ones. We are already impressed by what these AIs can do. But unlike other underlying software, there is no incentive to allow access to the most powerful AI to everyone in the world. Consider this. Adobe created Premiere Pro, which is the most powerful video editor. There are millions of people paying a monthly subscription to Adobe to use it to make videos of all kinds. Could Adobe have kept Premiere Pro a secret software and used it only internally to make their own movies? while being more efficient than the others who use more basic software? Absolutely, 
but it wouldn't have made sense because the movie creation process is still tedious regardless of the benefits brought by video editing software and the gap between video editing software is also not so extreme. Therefore, it's more interesting for Adobe to sell that underlying software so that yet more people use it to create their own content because that's scalable. But now imagine the powerful artificial intelligence that can create those movies all by itself without the need for script writers, directors, producers, actors, sets, costumes, or anything that usually goes into movie creation. A company that possesses such a software has no incentive to share it with the rest of the world on a subscription basis. Instead, it can immediately go for the big price and tap into gigantic markets while beating all the current traditional players in it. Imagine, hypothetically, a perfected version of ChatGPT, which you can ask something like, in which industry would it be the fastest and easiest to create a disruptive billion dollar company right now, and how to do it. And instead of giving you a general answer, it can actually be very specific and tell you exactly the step-by-step -step instructions to do it. Do you think a genuine AI answer to such a prompt would be allowed, or that the company behind such an AI would rather keep it to itself and implement the advice? As they say in their own article, the default setting of our products will likely be constrained. I guess you see where I'm going with this. We are the kids, and ChatGPT and other AIs are like toys that we're allowed to play with and which are most likely very basic compared to the real tools that OpenAI and a few other companies already possess. While we will be using them to our maximum productivity advantage and killing many creative jobs in the process, the fun will most likely last only for a short period of time before the most lucrative markets are dominated by a few companies which have exclusive access to the most advanced AI systems. Since there is no incentive to share the access to such systems, the only real solution is a political one based on competition law. And there's only a very short launch window while the governments still have some power at all to put such laws in place. Or later, it will be too late. Sorry if I killed the mood.